So with that note, uh, let me just uh, start uh, and uh, maybe I will take around 40 minutes uh, just to uh, take you through what's happening in the COVID scenario and how consumer behavior especially is emerging, changing and what we can do and help to balance the businesses, help the clients as well as uh, the brands. And maybe, you know, uh, 15 minutes we can devote for Q&A. And if there are more questions, I will be happy to address it offline. Uh, I'll share my email address uh, with all of you, uh, and then maybe we can discuss it offline as well. Uh, as I was saying that everybody in this scenario, if I had to start with, is, uh, uh, is going to benefit by the co-creation only. Because uh, nobody in this particular scenario, as you have very well understood that it's an agile kind of a scenario. Every time it keeps changing, it's so uncertain. And it's very, uh, very versatile. It's, it's very agile. Given that particular scenario, it's always uh, good to connect with each other, learn from each other so that a value creation can be done. And uh, the second thing I wanted to even say before I start off is also we should uh, look at the way I'm going to present my thoughts is more optimistic a little bit because uh, what are the opportunities and the changes which are coming up for all of us and how you all can help the clients. I think that would be my orientation towards what I'm going to share because there are a lot of challenges. There are a lot of uh, issues and problems which we keep reading and discussing. But I think um, as to way forward, as we, need, uh, as we move ahead, more importantly, what we have to focus on, given that whatever we have, how do we flourish and nurture the clients as well as our businesses so that we reach the end result? That should be the objective with which I'll start my presentation. And I'm going to discuss about the consumer behavior and uh, how it is changing and uh, emerging uh, in the COVID scenario, because uh, I think, uh, and I was discussing with my students today, whole day I had the sessions with the PhD students at MICA, and I was telling them this is the opportunity to co-create new knowledge, because all the marketing fundamentals of consumer behavior, branding, advertising are going to change. And how do you live and survive in this change scenario is something which will help you to stand out. So whatever we have, uh, you know, learned and we are being trained, we have to unlearn, relearn, and maybe look into rescaling all of that at a larger level. So with that, let me just quickly tell you what I'm going to cover in the next uh, 35 minutes or so, uh, which is the consumer reactions, what are people reacting to, what is a new normal, because everybody talks about it, but what exactly is happening and how we have to get adapted to it how people are acquiring the products and the services and what is the outlook of the behavior because uh, the whole idea is I still remember uh, the whole idea of advertising and branding is it goes hand in hand with how the consumers are evolving and how advertising evolves it's also along with the consumers and consumers also evolve with the campaigns and the ads so it's like simultaneous process, uh, which I still remember. Uh, this was given by Prasun Joshi when he was invited in my casa keynote. That was his first opening statement that, you know, this is how it works. It's more of a people driven, which I keep saying that uh, you can use a technology, but ultimately you're dealing with the people and you need to understand the people in order to reach out to them. So with that, let us start. Uh, this is how people are reacting and there's nothing new in it. But if you look at the reaction, nobody is so happy about it. Everybody is sad. Everybody is anxious. Everybody is going through the trauma. Everybody is going through uh, the larger changes which has happened in their life because of the financial constraint, because of somebody's uh, loss in terms of the family member, all, all of that. So these, this is exactly what is happening. And I'm going to go uh, provide you a global scenario. Uh, reason being, uh, we learn from each other's, uh, you know, brands all over the globe. And it's not only specific to India, but probably I'll also provide you some examples that relates to our country as well, because we work in a country, uh, a beautiful country like India. So that would be the whole orientation of the session. Now, uh, if I move ahead, uh, then this is how I define, and you will see a lot of that uh, 
aggregations uh, and uh, you know what i normally start with by saying is that uh, we should always believe in creating something new so this is exactly the new normal all about which is hnh and i'm going to give you some kind of the models and the framework which will help to understand what's happening because it's uh, it's better to know everything but it's also important to align and curate it in a kind of a framework and a model which we can remember because there's a lot going on it's not about uh, information coming to us but it's overloading of information at times so in such a scenario the human psychology is that we exclude a lot of stuff which might be important but we retain that stuff which is actually presented in a simple way which is easy to remember so if you look at this um, in the new normal i am emphasizing on 2h which is at home and being healthy so this is something which is quite important which covers all the parameters which you see here this was a global study on the basis of which uh, you can see the numbers here they always want to be at home as we are at home right now working from home not using any public transport having the social distancing all of that but concentrating more on being healthy that means at home you will be acquiring a lot of gadgets maybe television all of that uh, which was not seen so much and i'm sure you might have seen the trps of uh, krishna and other uh, you know uh, serials which people have not even imagined ramayana for that matter uh, they're sitting together with the family and uh, watching that that is an opportunity uh, to be in that space healthy living you will see a lot of apps which are being used by the employees nowadays in order to understand uh, in order to be fit and maybe live a healthy life because another example i can give you about vietnam where they have actually worked on a healthy lifestyle and they have not gone for a lockdown because they believe that if you're healthy if you have a proper lifestyle which again relates it with the gadget then probably you will have uh, you will be better off in covid 19 that's how uh, they are working uh, another example is also about new zealand because new zealand also worked on a similar format where they have actually saying go out for the work do a healthy life uh, be self reliant do everything by yourself and uh, go back to work that's how the lifestyle needs to be given in the covid scenario so here is uh, uh, one of the model which i have developed if you see here have quoted that india is a very optimistic country which is followed by the china and us this is what is the strength of our country based on a 41 country study least optimistic countries are japan korea and uh, european uh, nations and here we have the 7c model in the 7c first of all the consumer sentiments is uh, very optimistic which is really good for the businesses and the clients uh, and then the consumer needs if i have to say then it is more about info entertainment and digital experience this is exactly uh, going back to the basics if i have to say that way because uh, we started with something and uh, we are going back it's a vicious circle where we have went back to the same basic essentials and value driven products in terms of the mood they they are like reflecting on what they were doing because they used to live a very fast paced life and when i say uh, they it includes the global consumers because even in the us and europe this is exactly what was happening they were just moving and they never reflected on what they have done but i think this is the time when they are reflecting what exactly they want to do in life they are working on their hobbies they are going back and actually spending a lot of time with the family as well so this is the mood of the consumer in terms of attitude this is something which has changed at three levels which is sustainability so sustainability at three levels how first at the individual level that if i am going to consume the product how it is going to affect me second is at the community level how it is going to affect the community and third is that how it is going to affect the society so three levels are working together at the, the consumer level and here i would also like to say that there is a simple format which we have developed recently in the book that we wrote about consumer behavior a digital native which is a a b c d framework which is acquisition b is for buying c is for consuming and d is for disposition now what eventually has happened is people have for money to buy but uh, they do not have uh, the resources to dispose 
Now, when you're disposing, at that point of time, you have to be careful about the society as well as the community. So when I say this, I'm talking about the global consumer. This is how they work in terms of sustainability. For example, if you talk about the airlines in India, probably people would emphasize more on, you know, price or maybe they emphasize on the time. But uh, in the developed nations and all of that, sustainability is important because uh, they will select a particular airline on the basis of the carbon footprint. Because if your airline is not aligned with the sustainability as a whole, probably they will not go for that airline. That applies for Delta as well as American Airlines. So that's how they are going to put up the, uh, you know, all the detailing of the data will be provided to the consumers and accordingly they are going to make the decision. This is something which has changed in COVID scenario, which was there earlier, but I think it has elevated further. Consumers always look for solution. This is the another C which you see here. So this is like digital and contactless. Of course, they are not looking for products and services. I have to say, as I was telling that we have to relearn everything. So here I'm saying that four P's, seven P's, all of that doesn't work. What works is we introduce a model which is known as SEBA, uh, solutions, informations, value, and access. You provide them the solution, and that's how they love because they're looking for solution. I'm stuck. I want a fitness app or maybe a gadget. So that is something, a solution which they are looking for in not a product as per uh, their requirement. Then you provide them the information which they are looking for. That this is the fitness app which can be used. Uh, how, so that is information. How much value does their brand provide? This is something which has changed completely in terms of the consumer's mind that they're going to use those brands which provides a lot of value. Now, when you say a lot of value in the sense for a country like India and Asian market, it is more of societal value in which uh, consciousness is there among the consumers. But if you talk about the developed nation, European market, American market, it's more also to do with the individualistic value that how much value your brand, for example, Apple provides to them. Or for example, Merck is providing any value. For recently, I'm sure you might know that Merck has also worked on sustainability. If you're going to use the cars, probably you help the environment as a whole. This is something which people are looking for in, at a global level. Then the other parameter of C is consumer uh, activity. So what are they doing? They are at home, they are doing their uh, work as well as they are working on their hobbies. They are working on the fitness aspect, which I have uh, covered earlier as well. And the last point is about what kind of products and the services they are looking for. So essentially, as I was saying, they've gone to the basics. That is, they're looking for food uh, and uh, home entertainment, snacks, and personal care category has come up, but now as the people have started using masks, the eye makeup is something which has come up in a big way uh, as compared to the earlier segments. So the, these are certain things which has uh, changed in the COVID scenario. And uh, given all of that, the seven C's works because uh, that's how you are able to align what's happening in one model itself, in one capsule. You don't have to refer to so many things because in order to develop this, I think uh, it, it took me a while, but I think uh, it helps to curate the information and then probably use it while you develop the campaigns for the clients and the brands. And uh, then uh, how it is shaping up in the new normal. So basically, uh, there are a few, uh, three points which I have to say, which is about the digital influence, which is, ex uh, you know, very high. Remote working, which has happened. Now, when I say digital, probably, you know, you get the captive audience now. That's what I was telling to my students as well before this session I, have, I was teaching them that uh, you have an opportunity over here because earlier you never had a captive audience. You used to, they had fragmented mind because they were all over the place. But now the audience is there and probably you just have to ensure that uh, they are with you and you are also with them because I always say the brand should be a friend in hand and mobile phone is something which is the first screen at least for India because uh, television is always at the back but in the forefront it's all, always the mobile phone and um, there was a study which was recently done which sa said that uh, you know in India if a multilingual person is there 
that means you are able to use multiple gadgets at one time this also symbolizes that you are finicky uh, in terms of your behavior as well as you are versatile as well as you are impatient so these are the some of the insights uh, about the people who use these gadgets but uh, that means the implications are in terms of digital uh, the people in india are highly impatient they want everything to be very quick and that's why um, i think amazon came up with a campaign or the cow which has worked very well because that anxiety level in our country is really very high and uh, with that they are able to manage multiple gadgets you have ipad you have laptop you have uh, you know a mobile phone and you have television at the back which is goes on every time so the whole idea is that they are able to manage all the gadgets because they are multilingual uh, besides hindi and english they are able to access multiple other regional languages as well so that's how it provides us the opportunity as the marketers and the advertisers to reach out to them because they are open at different screens and we can connect with them very easily but as it is a remote working i think most of the companies like lnt uh, facebook all of them they are going for a hybrid model where in fact even after the post covid they will be uh, inviting uh, 30% of their workforce but maybe 70% of the workforce will work from home so probably that would be the scenario because it will help the employees it will help the uh, families as well as the companies because their fixed costs will be eliminated while people start working from home and this has actually implications on the tier b and tier c cities because they have become uh, more comfortable they have gone back to their home and they are with their family so this is something which has changed the scenario but it is really uncertain as i was telling and it is uh, creating little bit of anxiety among the consumers that's how the new normal can be defined that means we have to be little agile in terms of our strategies and approaches as marketers so now this is the new uh, kind of the consumers which i can could present to you one is the champions who are always uh, proactive and understanding what is happening at the global level what what that person needs to do why is that important all of that so these kind of people always read a lot about the description about the product services everything that you offer them so this is one type of the consumer second type of the consumer is accumulators who always pile up lot of stuff i don't know when the lockdown will happen and then they will just do the pile up but they are like at the state to stop then there is a third category which is stable which is they just stay calm and cool and they will just follow the steps and the Uh, whatever guidelines has been provided and they be happy about it four ca fourth category of the consumer is more of the societal which is more helping the community helping out and i am sure you might have seen in delhi and mumbai especially where people are just going out and helping the people uh, for in different ways and the four uh, fifth type of category is apathetic which is quite uh, least because Uh, they feel that uh, they are indifferent and they have nothing to do what's happening uh, because everybody is involved including the kids and the old age people so probably uh, that is the fifth category now i come to the uh, third part uh, which is how people acquire the products and uh, being marketers uh, you will be a little excited to know so this is what i was telling you that um, we are going back to the basics but we have to work on the quality of the products they have to be more digital uh, more work on the digital aspect for example in the us they have started up with the studios so uh, it's like a retail setup but it's more of a studio format where you use the omni channel and i think i saw that with prada and gucci where they have done it very beautifully you just go and have the touch points uh, where you yourself as a consumer can decide what you need and how you need with the gadgets so it's more automated and it's the control is more on the consumers so you empower them as brand and they feel happy about it because nowadays consumer don't want that the brand should have the control unfortunately it's our baby but we have to co create the baby together that's how it goes and uh, we use lot of inside out approach as i was saying that how people are changing they are becoming more um, you know cautious about the safety issues health, uh, health issues probably for example in big bazaar if they will go there will be more concern about their safety and health issues rather than what's happening uh, there 
or what are the deals which are being offered to them, what used to happen earlier. In the same case, uh, Dabur also have changed their entire product portfolio by outside in because they have started focusing more on immunity with that Tulsi drop and Haldi drops and all of that. So I think that is something which is coming up in a big way. Uh, then well-being, well-being at three levels again, health, emotional and mental, very, very important. So uh, the consumers really want that the well-being has to be emotional because uh, you're at home and you're completely draining out. I just saw in a campaign, I used it in my class where uh, Apple came up with a campaign saying that the whole working uh, from home. So they actually laid out the entire scenario, how people are working and the kids are around and you have a presentation which has to be delivered within, uh, within the deadline and the entire team works uh, how to make it happen. And it's the exactly same, uh, the scenario which is happening with the consumers, which has been lifted in the campaign. I think that is exactly what is happening in that space of consumers as well. And there are multi-layered for the relationship. I think that has come up in a big way because uh, every brand is becoming little local and that's what uh, even Indian brands like Dabur again uh, goes back and they say that uh, for their chavan prash, uh, for their toothpaste, everything is, uh, you know, mitti se juda. So basically they are connecting every product which they manufacture with the country and that's how it is connecting with the people. So I think that's where uh, it's coming from. It's community driven, of course, and uh, they are getting more uh, happy with the familiar brands which they have. But there is a lot of experimentation which is going on with the consumers. In the slide, uh, I have also kept the YouTube link. I don't have the time to show you the video, but I can share the slides with you and then probably you can see the video. I think that will really help to enhance uh, the examples which I am giving you now. So this is another example which comes from, uh, you know, Australian Red Cross, which is exactly working on the mental uh, well-being of the consumers and how the, the trends are being captured by them. And uh, they're providing the guidelines to the people because I think that is really important for the consumers right now. So this is the product portfolio which you see here in terms of uh, going to the basics. So personal care, uh, health is the priority, of course. And uh, then the food and the medical, I think uh, that is something which is always there on the priority. And you see all the figures. This is like the global figures which we got from 40 plus countries uh, all over the world. And uh, then what is happening is, so there is a lot of growth as well, as I was telling you that is, everything is not sad. Certain things are also good, which is about, if you see Alibaba, it's growing by 220%. Uh, and uh, if you look at the online delivery uh, service, which is in SCART, uh, that's again, the subscription grew up by 20, uh, 10 to 20 times, which is again, a phenomenal growth. And these all brands have the lasting uh, experience in terms of the e-commerce phenomena with the brands and products. Now, this is another example of uh, West Shield, uh, which is actually uh, with the click and collect kind of an order which they have given on their website, which is where you pick and there's no, it is a drive-through which is there in the US, uh, which is quite common. I think uh, McDonald's have also started the drive-through, the first one, uh, I think in Mumbai, where uh, people can just come in and take, pick up the product and go. I think that format will change in a big way. So this is exactly what they have done given the COVID scenario. So in terms of the leisure, what consumers are doing, they are doing, uh, they are more on Zoom as we are uh, and connecting with people. A lot of, uh, like for example, in the US, they have the birthday celebrations, uh, they have weddings. So basically I attended one of my friend's wedding online and the way it was that, okay, uh, we celebrated through Zoom and we had the fun uh, while we collected all of the friends and the memories together and we collate all the videos from all over the world about that particular wedding and we posted it on YouTube. So I think the format has changed completely the way we used to express ourselves. 
then uh, I think Hotstar has taken up in a big way. If you look at the numbers, look at uh, these, these are like mind blowing numbers, which we have got in terms of the media creation and content creation. I would like to add some point uh, besides what you read over there on the slide is that earlier people were little uh, not sure whether to you know, share the data or develop the content, but now they have opened up. Now, if they have opened up, that is a good thing for the brand because uh, experimentations can be done. They are more uh, helpful and they can help the brands at a larger scale. So that's what I wanted to say. Now I've also wanted to tell you that it's not about the products and the services, but it's also about the places. So we are doing some research on the places and how the places can be rebranded and how this uh, digital uh, platforms can be used because that's how this particular island is also connected with the travelers and they always have connections, digital connections and engagement with, with the people, which again provide them the experience. So experience is going to be really at the priority for the consumers and experience is not about having a person at a place or a product or a service. Uh, having a person digitally connected can also provide an experience uh, given this particular scenario. In terms of healthcare, uh, these are the basic uh, fundamentals, which is about the hygiene and the health fitness issues. But I think what will come up in a big way uh, besides the fitness and uh, hygiene factors is the telemedicine, telehealth. Because I think earlier we used to be reluctant about what is going to happen, but uh, this has come up in a big way as you see the examples of Israel here as well as the US. A lot of people are using it and it has worked very well for them uh, as well as for the healthcare uh, you know, people, including the doctors. So I think uh, digital healthcare will come up in a very big way. And then uh, probably these are some examples. I think Dettol, Savlon are using it. The apps are using uh, the same uh, virtual fitness, which I was discussing about. And uh, then the other example is about uh, how this WHO also has started using that, how communities have become more conscious, how people have become more conscious. And the people are becoming more conscious about not tasting food, uh, not even shopping for something which is not acquired, and they, the shopping is more about uh, the health oriented stuff. So besides this, what has happened eventually, and I'm sure you might have read, in China when everything opened up, everybody in front of Louis Vuitton store, there was a long queue. Now why? Because there is a revenge shopping. So if you suppress the human desires for uh, quite a bit time, then it spans out. It's like a spring, you know, you, when you suppress it, probably after a while, they will just come out and they will uh, indulge themselves in shopping because there was another study which we have done globally. And we found that the first thing which people want to do is shop because that's like a stress buster, not only for India, but for the global nations. And especially with women, it works very well because the reason being we did a women oriented study and we found that women, especially in, in a country like India, where though housewives especially, because nobody listened to them and there's a social need for every human being. So what happens is that they want to satisfy their social needs at least somewhere. So if they are unable to get a platform in the physical setting, uh, which, is, which is where it comes from the orthodox family and people are not supporting them, they go online. And they make their communities and that's how they start discussing. So we did a study on uh, women bikers and it was exceptionally uh, done well because that's, that's how the lot of women bikers have told us that this is how they satisfy their social need, which they are enabled to do it in the on, offline setting. So this is what I was explaining you about the love for local. So this is uh, exaggerated further. This was a IBM study, which was recently done on during pandemic. And uh, even in Australia, people are buying from their own country because they want to support the country and their own economy. And what will happen after the post-COVID? I think I'm at the end of the last uh, part of the presentation. Uh, what will happen because people are very uh, anxious about the future. So this, these are the four quick points which I could pull out from whatever is happening. One is the quick recovery. It won't take so much of time, at least in India but the society will be the first priority uh, which is going to happen and uh, people would be happy to share their information so there is no earlier there was a thin line difference between the private and the uh, you know professional life i don't see that we don't 
we have that particular segregation now because everything uh, which you see now is uh, more of uh, a balanced kind of a scenario. So the time will be treated very well. People will be very mindful about their uh, consumption. Local brands will be used, but local brands have to provide the value. So the, uh, India has moved from price sensitivity to value-driven services. And that's how the value and quality will be very important. Though it is coming from India, but it doesn't matter because what we have understood from other studies also, which we have done in India is that uh, they are open to provide more prices provided the brands are able to provide the value to them. So for example, if uh, they're using Audi and uh, they are hanging out uh, with their friends, what is the value in terms of their image is they create among the peer group. If Audi is able to do that, they will be happy to accept the brand. The other parameter in India which works very well is the social uh, acceptance, which is very important and the peer pressure is very high. When I say peer pressure, it is more to do with the friends and less to do with the family uh, in India at least, uh, which we have seen. Then the mental hygiene is going to be uh, at a large scale. So the entire brands and the products will have to come to the consumers. Consumers will not go to them. It's a reverse process which is going to happen. Renting and aggregators will be at the peak because that's how it is going to be in the coming scenario. They don't want to take any ownership, which also means the luxury brands uh, uh, second uh, tier market or the counterfeit market will be at boom because they don't mind renting out the products. They don't want ownership anyways, because if you look at the scenario there uh, in the book also, we have written that the entire consumer behavior has changed drastically. Earlier, if you ask any person what will be your long-term benefit they always say that okay i'm going to buy a house i am going to get a car but now that is secondary for them they don't want to own a car because they cannot drive because of the traffic they don't want to own the house because they're very happy with the rented apartment or airbnb so all aggregators are working beautifully for them what they want to invest on that might be your next question so they want to invest on experience now experience can be digital experience can be of places which they want to explore, experience could be of brands. That's what is very important for them. Convenience and affordability and access. This is something which is going to be, uh, going to be there in the post-COVID scenario as well. So with that, let me uh, tell you in brief what is happening. So this is exactly what I said. Uh, besides the remote working uh, entertainment, I would like to also mention like robotics and uh, drones will be used quite often, which was not the scenario earlier, but I think that would help. I think uh, Domino's have also started doing that uh, with the pizza delivery. So th these are the certain pictures, which I think most of the brands have started doing, using that. And let me conclude. So basically we are going back. It's a vicious circle. We're shifting, uh, we are becoming more value driven. We are moving ahead with the essentials. This is the global data and the graph that you see here. Uh, consumer sentiments in the country are not so negative. If I talk about India, of course, it's not so uh, negative. It's positive. And uh, digital is something which is going to come up in a big way with the only channel, including retail, because that's what consumers want. And in the UK and the US as well, the entire retail segment is going to change completely. Uh, because uh, the digital is going to take a larger lead. So in fact, uh, we did a study in the US, it was uh, concentrated towards uh, New York and other places, Chicago and all of that. And what we have found is it was about the show window. How do you display all of that uh, in a particular setup of retail? There also we found that only channel marketing is actually going to work well because what uh, consumers want is their empowerment. They want the control. They don't want the control should be given in terms of the brand. So more people uh, would be, uh, you know, uh, buying everything online in terms of the products and categories, as you see, uh, groceries and snacks, of course, will go up. And apparels and, uh, you know, apparels again, uh, because people are not going out so much, that's why it is not so great. But uh, other products are going to do well. Then uh, there will be a shock to the loyalty. Now here, when I say there was another study which we have done, which supports the data which you see on the slide, is that uh, loyalty anyways people don't have. If you provide more value, as I was saying, that the entire scenario has changed for the consumers. If the brand and the products provide more value to them, they change to that particular brand. 
So anyways, the loyalty was not there. Now, again, the loyalty will be shaken up completely because they are going to experiment a lot of new brands and they are going to change the shopping behavior as well. But it will be value driven. And uh, then they're going to work on the health and the caring economy, which is exactly what is going to happen in the coming uh, time, because uh, they will be very particular about what you are offering, how you're offering, how it is healthy and connected with their lifestyle, which includes packaging as well. I think most of the companies have started doing that. So this is where we are. And then the new normal is also about the home body economy, where the intent is to purchase uh, you know, earlier it was out of home. Now it is inside the home. Whatever you do, you have to do it here because you have to save yourself, your family, as well as you have to get going with your work and your uh, other relationships. So with that, I would like to end. And uh, that's where we are relearning and unlearning <laughs> and learning as well and co-creating the knowledge because the, ultimately we are, uh, you know, curating the knowledge uh, which we have and probably taking it up at a larger scale. So probably with that, uh, I would like to uh, end uh, my presentation. If you have the questions, you can share it in the chat box or you, we can unmute you or you can unmute yourself. I'll be happy to uh, address the questions if you have. So thank you very much for, for this. Uh, my name is Satya Murthy. Uh, yes. I, had, I had the media wing for the group. Sure. Um, it's quite interesting. I had one question on, uh, you know, price sensitivity versus value, right? Is uh, Can you uh, elaborate a bit on that with some uh, sector-wise? Is it applicable to all, all products and services or is, is it more skewed towards specific categories? If you have a sense of it, it will be useful. Sure. So I will uh, definitely uh, highlight more part of it. Let me uh, explain what I was trying to say. I think earlier what used to happen was that uh, given the Indian market, I'm specifically talking about India here because uh, it was a very price sensitive market. But now eventually what has happened is people have moved from price sensitivity to value consciousness, which means that they're ready to pay. And this is through our work, which we have been doing. And I'll also specify in terms of the categories as well. But at a broader level, this is essentially what we have found. They're ready to pay, but uh, they want the value out of it. Now, how they assess the value is what I was trying to explain. First is they, they see the value at an individual level that as a consumer, what is the value your brand is offering me? For example, if I'm going to use a product or a car, like, you know, Audi I was explaining, then how much value do I get as a consumer or a user of Audi car? That's how I'm going to decide at one level. Second level is that how it is going to affect and provide value to my family and my near uh, closer friends and all of that. So that is a peer group that we, we have because that's how the influence of reference group is pretty high in a country like India. And the third is very important at a societal level, for example, uh, especially this applies to the elite class and uh, the luxury product categories, because there, if you want to be part of a particular group, uh, which uh, actually we uh, studied them and we were doing the field work in South Delhi and South Mumbai, and if you want to be part of that peer group, then you have to have these brands with you. If you do not have, then uh, somehow we felt that the identity has been lost. So it's uh, the identity of a consumer is also reflected by the brand consumption. It's not about the family that you belong to, or it's not about what your parents are doing and all of that, which used to be the earlier scenario, but now they want that, okay, what are the brands that you're using? Are you using an Apple brand or a Samsung mobile phone? or what cars you're using, all of that matters a lot. So this is at a broader level. So this has become a value-driven consciousness at three levels, individual, uh, peer level, and the societal level. And when I say societal level, because acceptance of uh, an individual at a societal level is very high in a country like India, because we belong to a communist kind of a culture uh, where we are. Now coming to the second part of it, what category-wise? So if I say in terms of the luxury sector, probably it is very high because uh, you are actually focusing not only on your individualistic consumption, but you are also 
working on your conspicuous consumption, which is where you want to flaunt with the brand. And the brand can provide the opportunities so that the consumers can do that. That's how the behavior is changing in that particular category. And they want to have that experience, and especially people coming from tier two and tier three cities and uh, starting their work in the metro cities, they always want to get accepted. So for that acceptance also, people have to use certain product categories and the brands. This is what is happening at the luxury space. When I have to say about the mass level, there also, uh, what the transition which we have seen, especially in the categories of FMCG and all of that, that they are ready to pay one or two rupees or maybe a little higher in terms of selecting a particular toothpaste or a toothbrush when it is related to sustainability or if it is organic or if the ingredients are natural because they are moving away from the chemicals. And if I have to relate this at a global level, then it is a little higher. Because in the US, European markets, all of that, what we have seen is that the behavior is completely different what we see in India. Because there the top priority is not about flaunting the brands with the peers. They really don't care about the peers and their social acceptance because they have their own identity. What they care about is how this consumption and for them acquiring the product is not important. What is important is that how do I dispose those products? And if I'm disposing those products, how it is going to affect the society, how it is going to affect uh, the people, all of that. So that is something which is completely driving towards sustainability. So in short, how it works is very well with the marketeers, which I keep saying is the HD model, which is the human digital model. You create digital touch points with certain human interventions because still people believe that it is about the people. And uh, whatever we do as marketeers for the clients, for the brands, is always we're dealing with people. So technology is helping us to elevate that uh, experience further, to engage with them further. But I completely believe that we, everybody works for the people. We need to understand the people, create the empathy with the people. For example, another example that comes in my mind is Vistara. So recently, Vistara launched their campaign saying that code model, which is essentially about the careful, which is C, uh, B is little observant, then D is uh, distant, and then E, which is very important, is empathetic, which is where it comes that as a brand, I'm so empathetic with you, whatever is happening, we really empathize. And that is something which consumers really like. So I'm, I was a little elaborate, but I hope I was able to answer what you said. Yes, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Uh, so I see there's uh, another, uh, are there any sp market specific learning trends like Southwest in terms of the consumer sentiments with regards to eating out? Okay. So in terms of eating out, uh, in term, uh, in the, if I have to examine our own country like India, so the question is that in terms of eating out, how uh, people are different in different parts of our uh, country. I think uh, that's quite relevant question because uh, if, if you talk about the North, it's little different from the South. So whatever studies uh, we have done and understanding we have curated from uh, the behavior of the people, what we have understood is that North is, uh, I'm not getting into the cuisine of it, but uh, probably it is more about the brands which they are eating out, where they are eating out, because in a city like Delhi, probably, uh, then what we have found is where you are throwing a party, a cocktail party is important, whether it is Marriott or Redison, all of that. That matters a lot for a Delhi. It doesn't matter that, you know, and how many cuisines you have, how many... Uh, you know, uh, layers you have, how many desserts you have, what is the spread, all of that is important. That is the second thing. Third is like what is happening is that who is invited. That is important because uh, it's all about the image in the North. It's all about um, maybe not having an image at an individual level, but at least showing off that image to the peer group that, you know, I carry this kind of identity. Uh, which I have, and I want to be part of that peer group which is there. This is like, again, seen quite often in the North. When I talk about the West, probably if I have to discuss about Mumbai, and this is what exactly what we found, 
is that, uh, you know, it's very individualistic in nature, which is completely uh, contradictory and bipolar, if I have to say, to Delhi, because uh, they would do a task or a service and they will eat out probably uh, because they feel there is a need and there is a value and it is important for them at an individualistic level. It's not so much to do with the planting of about a brand or something, but it's more to do with the requirements. It's more to do with the value. So that's how it is segregated. If I talk about the South, I think there what we have found is that they have to do dealt with a lot of technological stuff. So uh, there, if you have an omni-channel kind of a setup, probably uh, the digital data points or digital touch points for the consumers while they eat out, I think they appreciate a lot because their entire orientation, I understand the behavior and the sentiment of the consumer there, the entire orientation is technologically uh, savvy people. They think technology, they act in terms of technology, they buy the products that are technologically uh, apt with them. And same is happening with when they go out and uh, eat out probably. So what happens is that if you indulge that particular part, they would really appreciate because that's part of their lifestyle. So essentially, in short, what I'm saying is you need to understand the genesis of the consumers, how they are behaving and how they would behave in future. And accordingly, if you plan the strategies with them, I think that would do very well. Because given the country like India, if uh, all these things are related to the people and especially the emotions, so that would work very well. And interestingly, uh, what we have found in the COVID scenario is that you know, mothers are very happy across all the cities, if I have to sum up. I'm going a little beyond what was asked. And uh, that is where, you know, people are connected, family is connected with, with the mother and it's doing so well. So I think in, earlier there was also ma, uh, marketing, which uh, works very well. Yes, Ram, you have a question. Please go ahead. We have yeah, so you, uh, uh, thank you. This was uh, very enlightening. But I am a little confused about one thing. Uh, India, to me, does not seem like just the value based uh, uh, market. It is both price and value, is what my feeling is. While you rightly said that there is uh, South Bombay and South Delhi as comparison when you need to look at what car you own uh, next door. Uh, but the cross cultural variance within the country is so high that if you look at other other product lines, uh, let's say Netflix, right? Mm. Uh, uh, and that's the most premium product in the category, but it is mm. running at 150 bucks subscription simply because they need to compete with uh, with so many more available in the same category. So if you look at Indian consumer at 150 bucks, they'll probably have all five of them, which are available and streaming into your homes. Uh, then, then just look at the value proposition that comes with the Netflix, right? Because the price plays such an important role here that I'll also have an Amazon, I will also have a Netflix, I'll also have Z5, I'll also have so many more. I'm giving you, I mean, I, while your example on luxury products is bang on, uh, but uh, but it might not be because if you go, if you take the same example and go to Ludhiana, uh, there mm -hmm. everybody has got a Mercedes, right? Uh, and and uh, if you go next door, if you cross a few uh, lanes within within that uh, within that city, then you know that there is also a poor set of uh, people who can't even afford yes. a bullock cart. So uh, so it is not. J I, I strongly believe that it is not just value proposition, both value and price. Yeah, sure. I don't know whether I'm right. I, I, no, no, you are right. Absolutely. I think uh, before I made this statement, I uh, I should I would have uh, put up a footnote saying that. This applies to the digital natives and maybe the metro cities uh, and SSEA maybe or B plus. I agree with you completely, Ram. Uh, thank you for raising this up because we have so many India within India, so many cultures, subcultures, as you correctly pointed out, so many SSEs going on. Uh, I think for them, it's more about the price. Uh, it's not about the value. I completely agree because I was coming up with a socio demographic, uh, you know, parameter which is more about A, A plus and B plus. But I agree with you, uh, given that we have so many diversities within our country, it's like both if you categorize it into different segments. Uh, so thank you for raising this up. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, for Arun, for inviting us. And in case if you have any thoughts, anything which comes up in your mind, please do not hesitate to connect. I'll be happy to connect with you all. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much.